Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, listen, this Saturday, the 1st of August, we're having our 24 hours prayer and fasting. Praise God. And the beauty about it is you can join from anywhere, any part of the world that you are, but you are just going to follow our timing. You know why? Because we're going to be praying at every watch during this prayer and fasting. Now we're fasting for 24 hours, meaning from 12 midnight on Friday, 12 midnight on Friday, breaking into Saturday. Now it is Saturday, so, so don't miss this for any reason. See, so throughout Saturday, we're going to be fasting. So, so from 12 midnight, breaking into Saturday, we're, we're going to be fasting. And then we're going to have our first prayer meeting at 12 midnight. And then we're going to have the second prayer meeting at 3 a.m. And then at 6 a.m. And then at 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. And then the last prayer meeting is going to be by 11.30. And it's going to be via Zoom. So wherever you are, you can join the other saints that will be praying together. Listen. We've been receiving mega testimonies with, through these meetings. I'm telling you, to several testimonies, praise God. And I want you to be part of it. So wherever you are, get your timing right. You know, find out our own time. We're going to be using our timing over here in Nigeria. So, so get that West African timing and check what your own timing is. And the truth is, whatever timing you, you use, you see, you're going to be fasting for 24 hours. See? Oh, yeah. You're going to be fasting for 24 hours. And, and because we're praying together in unity, oh, things are going to happen in your life in the month of August. I'm telling you, August is going to be a great month. I'm excited about it already just to think about it. So get ready. Plan for that. Set your alarm for that. And, and God is going to bless you. Praise God. All right. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And then we, we, we are in verse 23. Let, let, let me read verse 22. For he had called, for he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. You understand that now? He says, verse 26, you are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Ah, this is big. It says you have been bought. You are bought with a price. Then don't be servants to men. Now, does that mean I shouldn't, I shouldn't walk um, in a place? Does that mean I shouldn't have a boss? That's all he's talking about. But he said don't slave yourself. You're free. So it means that every authority you bring yourself under, it should be because you chose to bring yourself under that authority to serve willingly not because you know you don't you don't get into that place where people treat you anyhow they they, they treat you as a doormat and then you say and it's because of christ though it's because of christ now you are out of line when you do that now this is this is with every situation you don't let people treat you like a doormat you know your freedom but you choose to serve and you serve that willingly with every conscience in your heart so don't say i, I did that wrong because my boss wanted me to do it. You're out of line. And God will never support you in that. See? Because you're there to shine as light. Never forget that. Brethren, let every... Verse 24. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. Yet I give my judgments. Okay? So he's saying again, I have not heard God concerning this one too. Yet, I'm not going to keep quiet about it. Let me say what I think now. What I say might end up being the mind of God. But because God has not expressly told me, this is an, an, several things like that with us. But now he, he's being truthful that I have not heard God concerning this. Now what does that mean? Someone may hear God concerning it. Or I may hear God later concerning it and it will change. But for now, this is the wisdom that I want you to follow. So let's look at what he said. And I'll tell you if I have heard God concerning it or not. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord. Yet I give my judgment as one that had obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. 
I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Okay. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. No, no, don't, don't think. Now, he said, because of the present distress. Now, what was he talking about? In the, the, when he wrote this letter, the church was under so much pressure. It's more like everybody was looking for how to survive by themselves. So he says, look, if you're bound to a wife, then you have a load to carry. So don't seek to be free. That's what he said. So, so hold your wife. Don't say, ah, a man to himself. No. Hold your wife and let's face the challenge together. And that was that time. See, we're not facing that pressure as it is today, at least majority. It's possible there are certain areas, certain communities that are facing the same kind of pressure, being a Christian. Praise God. Now he says, I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress. Distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Are thou bound to a wife? Seek not to be loose. Are thou loose from a wife? Seek not to be. Seek not a wife. This is not, he's telling them that at that stage, this is not time to get married. Praise God. Relax first. Because you don't want to get married and you're not sure if your wife is going to live another day or if you are going to live another day. You understand? Because of the present distress. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she had not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. Because of the present distress, if you choose to marry, it's not a sin. That's what Paul is saying. It's not a sin. But see, you're going to face troubles. See? Because now you're taking a responsibility. Meanwhile, you're, you're, you, you should be trying to save yourself first. Now, when I mean save yourself, not the Lord now. I'm talking about the, the situation that was going on around. Now, verse 29. But if... But this I say, brethren, that the time is short. It remained that both they that have wives be as though they have none. That doesn't mean neglect your wife. He's saying, you see, you, you live your life like, you know what? We're going, our, our, our purpose now is to please the Lord. So, so your consideration on a normal time may not be as, your consideration in this time may not be as it was on the, during a normal, you know, when everything is rosy. You understand what I'm saying? So, it says, it says, but this I say, brethren, verse 29, the, the time is short, it remained that both they that have wives be as though they have none, and they that weep as though they weep not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passed away. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, Care it for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Now, this is normal. This is true. When you're unmarried, all you think about is what, what, what God's going to have me do next. That's all you think about. But when you get married, um, okay, I, I, I need to discuss this with my wife. You know, some men say, I don't need to discuss anything with my wife. When God says I should do it, I just obey him and I do it. Hey, remember, you're going to have problem in the flesh. Your wife will wake up one day and say, I'm tired. I don't want to do it again. And then you start saying, can you imagine? She did it. She's not the devil. She's feeling neglected. <laughs> God. But, but am, I going to, am I going to displease God and please my wife? Your wife is not Lord. She's never competing with God in your life. But all she needs is explanation. Okay, carry her along in the vision. Honey, this is what the Lord is commanding me to do. And this is how I figured it out. And can we pray about it? Maybe the wisdom is going to come from you. There are things my wife and I pray about, and the wisdom comes from her. See, God says, do this. I say, okay. Oh, this is what the Lord is saying we should do. Can we pray about it? And in praying about it, her spirit is open. She receives the word of the Lord, you know, from. You know, that's why in the first place, as believers, the foundation for your marriage relationship should be the Lord. Why, why did you choose to marry this person? Not because ah, he's tall and handsome. No. Yes, I saw his tallness. I saw his handsomeness. But I took all that before the Lord. I said, Lord, this tall and handsome guy is talking to me. What do you think? Do you know him? See, that's the first thing you ask the Lord. Do you know him? 
Now, what I mean, do you know him? Of course, God knows everybody. Do you know him in your kingdom? Do you hear his voice? Does he visit you? Is he your friend? And you must get a confirmation from the Lord. Oh, sister. Oh, brother. You must get a confirmation from the Lord that this is his mind concerning you. The foundation of that marriage is going to determine how well that marriage is going to go. Praise God. You know, I was talking to my wife one time and then, you know, she was accusing me and she said, you, you, you act because you, you feel, I mean, uh, there's nothing I can do. And I said to her, I said, no, 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 you're getting it wrong. I know before either of us do anything, the Lord will hear from the Lord concerning. So my faith is in the Lord, not in your ability. And that's how it should be. See, because if my wife is taking a stand that I don't like, I know what to do. I turn to the Lord. He knows how to reach out to her. Same thing her and me. So, so we enjoy that union because the Lord is there. So when we, say, when we say the Lord should be the center of your marriage, it's not because of you reading the Bible together and be praying together and be doing everything together. No, it means both of you subscribe to the Lord for wisdom to take every decision that you need to take. Praise God. Verse 33. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. <laughs> and like I told you some days ago, I said, if you don't satisfy your wife as a husband, God's going to judge you for that. If you don't take care of your wife, God will judge you. If you don't satisfy your wife sexually, God's going to judge you. So now these are all the cares that come in with marriage. That's what Paul is saying here. That he that is married seeks how he will please his wife. God. There is difference also between wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak to your own prophet. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he, is, he behaveth himself uncomely towards his virgin, if she passes the flower of her age and not and need so require, let him do what he wills. He sinneth not. Let them marry. Praise God. Now, there are several translations you know, relating to this. Some say he's talking to the father. If, you're, if your daughter who's a virgin is, has reached the age of marriage, don't hold her from being married. She wants to, if she wants to get married, let him marry. You know, well, whoever it is, he's just saying that if you get to that point and you think it's wise for you to get married, nothing is restraining you from getting married. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but had power over his own will and had so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin do it well okay that's this is where the problem is can a father decides look my daughter will not is not going to get married now remember paul was saying because of the current situation i want to be sure my house is well counted so at that level at that stage if a father says you know what i don't want i don't want you guys to get married i don't want my daughter to get married because because you're going to take her away and I want to be sure I have the right, or I have, the, I have, I know I have the strength to protect my family. So I want everybody to be safe in that situation. He said he's doing well. That's what Paul is saying. So then, he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband is dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she wills only in the Lord. But she is, but she is happier if she so abides after my judgment. And I think also that I have the spirit of God. Praise God. I just needed to finish this chapter 7. We, we did. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Now you understand that. That's that just what it means. Praise God. So we're going to move to chapter 8 tomorrow. Praise God. Let me bless you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I bless everyone watching and listening right now. Thank you for your truth being made available to us. 
is restoring the honey in their marriages. And the ones that are seeking to be married, I declare right now, a miracle is taking place. And God is connecting you to that one he has ordained for you and is godly. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.